Good evening, Rashid. Okay, so all are here. Harshit joined from two devices. Harshit, have you joined from two devices? Harshit? Uh, everyone, please uh, put on your cameras. Put on your cameras, Harshit and Neha. Sorry, Adakshin and Neha. And good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. So, can anyone summarize what we did in the last class? A brief summary. Anyone? Neha? Mom, we studied about reversible and irreversible change and okay. physical chemical change. Mm -hmm. What are reversible and irreversible changes? State with example. Yes, ma'am. Reversible changes are changes which can be reversible, which can be changed into their original form. Okay. Examples are. Um, Mom, dog, like when we make it into a shape, we can change it into its original shape back again. Uh, speak a little louder, uh, Neha, speak loudly, please. Mom, uh, example is dog, a flower dog. Okay. And irreversible chain, the action of her shape? Mom? Hmm? What did you say? Mom, when we uh, like break a door, we cannot do it again same as it is like that. If we? When we uh, crack the door, we cannot fix it as it, as it is, ma'am. Okay. If you break the door, okay, fine. It is ir irreversible. Irreversible change. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other example? Any other example? No? Ma'am, can I? Hmm, please. Uh, ma'am, irreversible changes are out like Examples of irreversible changes are um, heating, um, heating roti. Okay. Uh, Mom, when we change milk into curd, we can't uh, change again, uh, change curd again into milk. Very good. <laughs> So this is the part where we actually left in the next the last class. Uh, 
system. So if you remember, we discussed physical and chemical changes also. Physical change is the change that occurs without causing any change in the composition of matter. Usually, these changes are reversible in nature. For example, uh, you can say melting of ice. If ice melts, okay, that water that is converted into water form, liquid form. If we again refrigerate it, or if we you know again uh, bring it to the low temperature, it will again come back to the same uh, shape, size, and that solid state. Okay, so that type of change is physical change. So there is no composition of matter in the ice form. Also, it was H2O molecule, water molecule. And in liquid form also, the formula is H2O. So no such change in the chemical composition. Right? So yes, usually these things are reversible in nature. No new product is formed in this state. Now state more examples of physical changes. State more examples of physical changes. Some change in the size like, uh, ma'am, when we blow a balloon. Hmm? The balloon increases its size. It increases its size. Hmm. And and if we allow the gas to release out, then the balloon is in the occupies the same shape. Yes. Okay. So inflation and deflation of balloon is a physical change. Very good. So again, no change in chemical composition. No new product is being formed. These changes have no impact on the molecular composition of substance. And a few changes occur when cooling or heating is done. Uh, this is again that, you know, evaporation, condensation, sublimation, freezing, etc. means change of one state of matter to another state. In most of the cases, it is a physical change. Mama, I have a doubt. Huh? Pardon? I have a doubt. Yeah, please see. Mom, uh, the physical change says there's no impact on molecule, molecular composition, but when we change water into ice, solid hmm. into liquid, there is some impact on molecular change. Dear, it is just the arrangement of molecules. You know, it's chemically, the formula, there is no chemical reaction okay. when such is happening. Okay. So, like, uh, yeah, it is mentioned usually, the word usually focus on this word, it is not mentioned ki always, right? For example, growing of height, when a new baby is born, it is almost a size of, a, you can say, like hardly one foot in height, right? But as it keeps growing, it becomes five feet in height, six feet in height. So, this is also a change, a physical change, but you know, it is not reversible. We cannot reverse them back. So this is an exceptional case. Okay. No, uh, next comes to chemical change. Uh, yeah, corresponding points. Like uh, physical change occurs without causing any change in chemical composition. Chemical change is the change where chemical composition matters. That means in this change, actually chemically, the composition is being changed. Chemical changes are often irreversible. Now there are a lot many examples. Uh, cooking of food, ripening of fruits. State more example. Burning of matchstick. Mom, burning of a candle. Burning of candle, right? Man, dusting of iron. Dusting of iron, very good. More chemical changes, photosynthesis. Yes, ma'am. Using up of carbon dioxide, water, and nutrients from the soil by the plants, and the growing up of leaves and plants and flowers and fruits, etc. These are chemical changes. These changes lead to formation of new products. So you can, uh, you know, uh, give a thought again on all the examples. In burning of candle, we are getting light. In cooking of food, we are getting our food in a uh, soft and easy to chew. And we can eat it and the nutrients get dispersed into our blood, inside the body. After photosynthesis, we get flowers and fruits. Okay, so in every example, it's clear that we are getting some new products. These changes have direct impact on the chemical bonds and molecular composition of substance. Now, should I explain it more or it is clear, this point? 
I'm making screen. Okay. Ma'am, can you explain more? Do you see? Like photosynthesis, we sow a seed. We keep giving it uh, water every day. We have put the manure also. We have put the soil also and everything possible. After 15 days of span, we see uh, one of the leaves coming up out of the soil. Then month by month, we see, you know, flowers and fruits on it. So we the molecular composition is being changed. It was just a seed. Now it is grown into a leaf, a flower, a fruit. So there is a lot of chemical uh, changes going on in during that. And suppose you have a raw potato. Can you chew a pot raw potato? No, ma'am. And do you think if in case you anyhow you try to chew it, it will get uh, digested properly? It will get absorbed by your body? No, ma'am. Might give you stomach ache, isn't it? Because it is not soft. It is uh, difficult to digest. So by, while cooking, what we are doing? We are uh, by heating, uh, we are trying to make it soft. Or by boiling it, we are trying to fill it with water so that it becomes easy to digest, easy to chew. We are uh, putting in efforts to make the chemical changes so as to make the things easier. Okay, ma'am. Okay. These changes involve absorption and release of energy. Are you getting this point? Yes, ma'am. Absorption yes. of energy. And after, you know, after consuming the food, we have energy and we are able to do perform and do household chores, etc. Playing, yes, exercise, whatever. And examples, again, we have ample of. So please note the differences quickly. Ma'am, we already noted them in the last class. Pardon? Ma'am, we already noted these differences in the last class. Okay, the complete difference you noticed? You noted? Ma'am, I didn't note it, ma'am. One minute. If anything, okay. Anyone, if anything left, please note it. Put. Noted. Should I clear the screen? No, ma'am. I mean chemical change. Mom over. Okay. Yeah, so have a look at the physical changes. Crushing of can, melting of ice cube. Please do note that is there any chemical composition, change in chemical composition or 
are all these reversible or any um, change is reversible as well? Boiling of water, mixing sand with water, breaking of glass, dissolving sugar in water, shredding of paper, chopping of wood, mixing different colored marbles, and sublimation of ice. Clear? Yes, ma'am. You would you like to note some new examples? Yes, ma'am. Done. Okay. Ah, chemical changes. Rusting of iron cannot be reversed back. Hmm. Burning of wood. Once wood is burned out, we cannot get the wood. Metabolism. Cooking of an egg. Baking a cake. Anything related to cooking. Electroplating. Like, uh, you know how cars and vehicles are painted. It is not just a simple painting with a brush. It is electroplating. Means in a solution, uh, we uh, fix two of the rods. One is at positive higher level. One is at negative higher level. The solution gets split up on passing of electric current and the elements divides according to the positive and negative ions. And this way we place them. Rotting of banana or you can say ripening of fruits is also vinegar and baking soda mixture, fireworks, bursting of crackers, chemical battery, etc. What Fine. is metabolism? Metabolism, you can say digestion of food. Oh, okay. Want to note any new examples? Yes, ma'am. Yes. No down to clean. Noted. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now let's come to the next topic. Bhavesh, you join late, uh, late. Everyone, please put on your cameras. Fine. Now there are other ways to bring about changes in the substances. Now it is paused. Hold on. Can you see another uh, PPT with black color? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay, okay.
I'm just hold on, not. I'm not able to share the screen with the top one. Is it now visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, there are other ways to bring about changes in substances. Mixing two substances together, like a small amount of curd is added to warm milk, which leads to conversion of that milk into curd. This change is an irreversible Fine. And when we add a salt to water, it becomes salty. But this is a reversible change. Just two simple examples, like how can we bring about changes in substances. There can be few more. Like uh, you can say, you know, by uh, churning of uh, cream continuously, what we get out? By no. churning of hmm? no, butter. butter, okay. And how can we convert uh, milk to cheese? Paneer. Number three. Paneer, uh, paneer by adding uh, vinegar and uh, in the, the liquid part is drained off and the solid form, uh, part forms the paneer. Yeah. We can add any uh, sour uh, substance to milk, to warm milk, little warm milk, and you know it will automatically get separate out. You can say lemon or uh, little vinegar works out and we can strain it out, separate the liquid part. Okay, next important topic is expansion and contraction. What is expansion? By the name itself, it, uh, it's clear that something is getting bigger in size. Isn't that expanding? Right? So a process in which an object becomes bigger in size, that is the particles expand or become loose. Or you can say the particles are loosening up. Right? Exa example, metals expand on heating. The so amount of expansion becomes uh, differs uh, in solids, liquids, and gases, and gases expand the most while solid expand the least. Okay. Now, by heating, what happens? Suppose you are heating water. You have uh, kept water in a pan and let it to boil to heat. After a minute, we'll notice the disturbance in water because it has now gained a lot of energy such that the molecules of water are, you know, dancing. They are moving. They are trying to move up and down and we say that it is boiling so it has enough energy right so this logic applies to gases as well as solids right solids also gain energy but their molecular arrangement is so tight they are so closely packed that they cannot make the random movements whereas in gases where molecules are already far apart they already have a lot of space between them the gases you can say they expand a lot is it so? Are you getting what is expansion? Yes, ma'am. So basically, when we heat anything, when we increase the temperature of any object, it expands. Why it expands? Because the uh, particles gain energy and that energy is turned into movement. Whereas we know that in solids, we cannot see the movement. Uh, but, you know, the size very uh, small amount of change can be noticed if we notice it deeply. Right. Next slide. Uh, just uh, let me change to a next slide. Understand and then I'll give you the time to write down. Okay. It is contraction. Do one thing. Note down expansion here. Note down expansion, please.
uh, while writing this line, the amount of expansion differs in solid, liquid, and gases. Don't write the word becomes, okay? Okay. Noted? No, ma'am. Can you state any example of expansion in everyday life? Anyone? Mom. Mom, examples for expansion. Pardon? Mom, uh, exp uh, examples of uh, expansion. Expansion, yeah. Ma'am, uh, when we want to open a lid, but the uh, lid is tight, we if we put it in the hot water, the lid becomes loose and expands. For example, very good. Ma'am, and uh, when we keep uh, the water in the fridge, the water... Uh, uh, hmm? I'm done. Okay. Ma'am, when we blew a balloon, it will expand. It expands. Okay. See, uh, when we get fever, when we feel high in temperature, what we use, which instrument we use to measure the temperature of our body? Ma'am, thermometer. Thermometer. Have you ever seen how the liquid filled inside the thermometer rises to a level, to a value uh, in in accordance with our body temperature? Yes, ma'am. Is the name of liquid filled inside the thermometer? Yes, no, ma'am. It's, it's called okay. mercury. Yeah, it is a type of metal. Okay, now you will say metal and liquid in nature. Yes, this is an, a different type of metal which is liquid, which exists in liquid state at room temperature. So, when we put into our mouth or any body part that is, you know, high in temperature, the mercury inside it gets little heat up from our body only and it expands to a level which ma the mark corresponding to its expansion reflects the value of the of our body temperature. Okay, yes, 100, uh, 101, 102, etc. So this is one of the daily life example of expansion. You can write uh, expansion of mercury in thermometer. Write down the example. Expansion of mercury in thermometer. Noted? I'm noted. Thermal expansion. Add a word thermal expansion. Next, you can say, uh, although this thing has been, uh, cannot be noticed uh, practically, but the railway tracks, which are made up of iron and a heavy metal, they expand in summer. Or you can smell bridges when the bridges uh, used to, you know, uh, used to pass the vehicles. The joints in that bridges, which is made up of metal, that metallic joints, are uh, they also uh, expand in summer at at least such a temperature where now temperature is going passing crossing fifty degrees. Okay, noted this. Next, come to contraction. Contraction is just reverse of expansion. 
in expansion we need to uh, increase raise the temperature of an object and the object becomes bigger whereas in contraction it deals with you know uh, lowering down the temperature whenever the temperature comes down the object regains its original position or it comes back or its little decrease in size is being noticed in contraction so in a process in which object becomes smaller or shrinks uh, its particle contract or become tight is called contraction so in order to make tools like an axe the ring of uh, its iron blade is heated uh, which allows it to expand that is become larger in size and then it is allowed to cool down which makes it contract again that is become smaller in size leading to a tight fit of the handle are you getting yes ma'am yes ma'am so this down please ma'am we need to note it pardon we need to note it yes 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 now you can say deflation of balloon when placed in ice cold water try to place a balloon in a inflated balloon in refrigerator try this because if we place a balloon in ice cold water you know it decreases in size it starts deflating because of contraction sometimes this has also been noticed uh a very hot glass uh we just pour tea into a glass uh, you know and the running cold water the glass will break automatically due to contraction can you voice the breaking okay i'm telling uh if you fill a glass with hot tea or hot milk any hot substance okay and let's say uh, separate out the tea because the glass is still hot for few seconds bring it to the running cold water the glass will break please don't try this please don't try this okay it's very dangerous i'm just telling that it breaks due to uh, contraction can anyone state more examples of contraction in everyday life ma'am is melting of water ma'am earth is melting of water ma'am when we blew uh, gas into balloon when we um, release the gas it will uh, become small smaller ma'am oh, like its size you are not properly audible dear ma'am earth ma'am when we blew ma'am earth uh, contraction okay ma'am when we blew a balloon and release air out of the balloon it will become smaller right ma'am hmm. same its size correct ma'am does uh... Freezing of water count as contraction. Um, I'm changing water into ice co counts as contraction. Yeah. Noted this. No, ma'am.
done? No, Mama. You too. Mom, mom, one minute. Mom, done. Okay. So this Sunday we'll be having our test, subjective test of uh, same chapter changes around us. Be ready with the topics, reversible, irreversible changes, physical, chemical changes, and expansion and contraction. Okay. We have a class tomorrow as well, I guess. Let me check. It's uh, Wednesday today, no? We have class tomorrow also at the same time. Okay. If in case any doubt in any topics, please clear. Just hold on, let me see what with what stuff we are left. Okay, tomorrow I'll show you expansion in solids, liquids, and gases. And contraction in solid, liquid, and gases. Okay, just one of the PPT is left for tomorrow. And then, yeah. Any doubt, children, till the topic we have covered? Ma'am, I did not understand the activity you told in contraction that glass breaks. Pardon? Ma'am, I did not understand that activity you said in glass breaks. No, 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 no. There, that is not an activity. I'm just telling you an incident. It happened with me only. So I cannot forget that. It is not an activity. I'll tell you some other ways to try. Some other examples, okay? Please don't try that. Okay, fine, children. We'll meet okay, tomorrow for the same time. Bye-bye. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Have a nice day. Thank you, ma'am. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.